This is a tour of the new Air Mouse for the iPhone. Air Mouse is an in-air mouse controller that runs on your iPhone and gives you full control over your Mac or PC. In this new version, we've added a lot of great new features to give you even more control over your computer than you've had before. So let's get started. The first feature I'd like to show you is the in-air mouse control. In this mode, you move your cursor by pointing your iPhone at the screen of your computer as if you were using a laser pointer. To activate the movement, simply hold down the trigger button in the center of your mouse and move your hand around. Because the iPhone can't detect side-to-side -side movement, you have to put a bit of an arc in your movement as you move left to right. To click, you can double tap the trigger or click the left or right mouse buttons. Right below the trigger is a scroll area. You can drag your finger across this area to scroll up and down or left to right. Now this mode may require some practice to get used to, but once you get the hang of it, it's a very quick and easy way to control your computer. Now some people can find it a little difficult to get the hang of this, so we also offer a trackpad, which you can switch to by clicking on the icon in the top right corner of the screen. The trackpad works just like the one you'd use on your laptop except that it was designed to work with your thumb so that it can be held like a remote control and used in the air with one hand. It also has left to right mouse buttons as well as a scroll pad, just like the in-air mouse. Now you may think that the scroll pad is on the small side, but as you can see, once you start scrolling, you can use the entire front of the screen. The same is true for the trackpad itself, so although it looks small, once you start moving, you can use the whole screen. So it's actually a lot of space to work with. However, a lot of people wanted the ability to use the entire screen as a trackpad without having the keyboard in the way. So we've given you the option to do that as well. To hide the keyboard, simply flick your iPhone in a downward motion and the keyboard will slide away. And now you have the full screen trackpad to work with. But since most monitors are widescreen these days, it makes a lot more sense to have a landscape trackpad. So we give you that option as well. All you have to do is rotate your phone. In this mode, you can use the trackpad exactly as you would on your laptop. We've removed the scroll pad and instead have added multi-touch gestures, just as you'd find on your MacBook. To scroll, just tap two fingers on the scroll pad and then you can scroll in any direction. You can also tap the screen with two fingers to activate a right click. In this mode, the keyboard is hidden by default, but to bring it back, all you have to do is flick your iPhone in an upward motion. Although the keyboard takes up most of the screen now, you can still drag your finger over the entire front of the screen just as you could before. So now going back to vertical mode, I'll show you some of the features of the keyboard. As you type on the keyboard, your letters are sent to the computer, but also appear on the screen to show you what you're typing. Since some of the keys you find on your keyboard are missing here, we've made them available by double tapping. For instance, if you wanted to type a tab key, simply double tap the return key. Above the keyboard, there are three modifier keys, which work the same way as the ones in your desktop keyboard. These can be used to activate keyboard shortcuts. So for instance, if you wanted to open up a new window, you would just hit the appropriate keyboard combinations. These modifiers don't only work with your keyboard though, they'll also apply to your mouse clicks as well. So for instance, if you were in a web browser, you could just hit the modifier key and then all of your links will open in a new tab, just as they would if you were using your regular mouse and keyboard. We've also added some of this capability to the scroll pad as well. So if you wanted to zoom, you would just press the appropriate modifier key and scroll to zoom in and out. In addition to the standard iPhone keyboard, we have also added all the extra keys you'd expect on a desktop keyboard. To access these, simply press the minimize key to hide the keyboard and reveal the extended keys. There's an escape key, all your function keys, delete, home, enter, page up, page down, as well as the arrow keys. These also respond to the modifier keys as well, so if you want to use them to perform keyboard shortcuts, just bring the keyboard back up select a modifier, then press the key on the screen. Across the top of the keyboard, we've added four customizable hotkeys, which can be programmed to enter a key combination or to run a program. These can be set up in the server settings. Just click the function button, give your button a name, and assign it a key combination or an application. 
I'll go ahead and set this button up to run Front Row. You'll notice that when I click the OK button, the hotkey on the air mouse is updated with the name I just assigned it. So now to run Front Row, I can just press this button. Since the settings are all assigned on the service side, it will automatically have the correct hotkeys for whatever computer you're connected to, which is really nice when you're using this for multiple computers, especially when one is a Mac and the other is a PC. We've also turned the scroll pad into a programmable hotkey as well. By default, it's set up for Exposé, but you can set it up to do whatever you'd like it to. Next, I'd like to show you what I think is one of the most exciting new features of AirMouse. A lot of people have asked for media keys, and we wanted to add them. But the problem with media keys is that to really do them properly and give you the full control over your media apps, you typically need a separate button for every function of every media program you have, which could take up many screens and require a lot of customization. We really wanted something a lot more simpler, so we've come up with one screen to control all your media programs, but still give you a lot more control over your media apps than you'd get typically with the media keys on your keyboard. And the best thing about it is that you don't even have to click anywhere to access them. As you are controlling your computer, once you start using a media program, the media keys will automatically show up, and they will know exactly which program you're running and how to control it. We've taken the most common features you need to control a media program, such as play controls, volume controls, channel controls, and put them all in one place. By default, we've set up all the most common media programs for the Mac and PC, but we've also added the ability to allow you to add as many applications as you want on your own and customize them however you'd like. Additionally, we've created a whole new way to navigate your media apps. To show you that, I'm going to bring up Front Row. So we'll go ahead and use the hotkey we set up earlier to bring that up. Now that it's loaded, our media keys will come up automatically as you'd expect. With programs like Front Row, which were designed to work with a remote, they don't respond to your mouse or scroll wheel, so you're forced to use the app remote or your arrow keys to navigate the menus one at a time. You can do this just fine with Air Mouse, but it can be pretty slow to navigate with one key at a time, especially when you're trying to navigate through long lists of music, so we felt there was a better way to do this. So we've created a setting that allows the scroll pad to emulate the same actions you'd get from your remote but with much faster and easier movement. Just scroll up and down to navigate the menus, then tap the scroll pad to access each item. Depending on what screen you're in, the scroll pad will perform different functions. So for instance, when you're playing a track, you can use it to control the volume, or even flip through different tracks by moving your finger left and right. This is a really great way to navigate programs like Front Row. Now I'm going to switch over to the PC so I can show you the same functionality using Windows Media Center. On my PC I've set a password, so I'll just have to enter that to access the computer for the first time. It's only required on the first time you log in though, so after we connect, it won't be asked for again. You'll notice that once we connect, the keyboard will now show the Windows modifier keys instead, and our hotkeys are now set to the ones we defined on our PC, and the scroll pad will now activate Flip 3D on Vista. So let's go ahead and start up Media Center. Our media keys come up, and we can navigate all the menus using the scroll pad, just as we did in Front Row. Let's start by checking out a DVD. The media buttons can be used to do everything you'd expect from a remote. You can play, pause, forward chapters, and even speed up or slow down the movie by double tapping the next or back buttons. Now let's look at live TV. You can scroll through channels using the scroll pad, then change the channel by tapping the scroll pad. We've also added a keypad, so you can change the channel to a specific channel at any time. The play controls also work on the screen for pausing and rewinding live TV. Next, I'd like to show you web mode. Just like media mode, once you navigate to a web browser, the screen will now change to the web browser buttons instead. You can go forward, back, home, double tap to change your location, 
reload the page, stop it from loading, as well as pull up your bookmarks. We've also added plus and minus buttons, so you can zoom in on your web page, which is great when you're in your living room browsing the internet on your home theater PC. Just like the media keys, these are all customizable, so you can add as many web browsers as you want and make any of these buttons do whatever you like. You'll notice that as I use my computer, the interface will continue to change to the appropriate screen for the program you're using. But if you don't want to have to change the programs using your mouse, the buttons at the top can be used as an application switcher to switch back and forth between the most recent media and web programs you've been using. So that concludes our tour of AirMouse. We really hope you like all the features we've added. We wanted to make this as powerful and feature-rich a program as we could, but still maintain the simplicity and ease of use that you've come to expect from the iPhone.